Hi, my name is Vladi from Sellerboard.com. Today I'd like to show you uh, different possibilities how you can enter your cost of goods in Sellerboard. Let me show you my screen. So uh, we're now here in Sellerboard. Basically, what you should do, uh, first thing when you register in Sellerboard, is uh, enter your cost of goods. Because um, otherwise this dashboard doesn't make um, a lot of sense. So you will still see your sales and the amount of units sold and refunds. Um, and also products that you sold on any individual day or in any period of time. But your uh, profit will, of course, be wrong because um, you need to enter your expenses and cost of goods. And cost of goods um, is actually the most important thing to enter. So you can do it under the products menu. So I click on products here. So um, here you see a list of products. And uh, basically, this is the place where you enter your cost of goods. And um, by the way, this is our demo account. So uh, these are not real products, but they look like real. Um, here we've got a column which is called cost. Um, and um, if you're in Europe, um, it says net here. So you need to provide your net cost of goods without the value added tax. In the US, of course, also without, without any taxes, sales tax or something. And um, here's a column which is called cost type right and here um, basically there are just two values and uh, one of them is called constant and this is the easiest way to enter your co cost of goods and uh, this here is in euro but it works just as well in dollars or in whatever currency you specify when you're register so um, here this says for example one one euro 39 and uh, type constant means that this price is applied to all the transaction regardless when um, the transaction happened so basically, if we change the value here, um, this will take this will have a, a retrospective effect on all of our sales, um, starting basically from whenever um, seller board loaded um, your sales. And normally, um, by default, it's one year, one year before the registration date. So um, yeah, changing this price is a very easy way to start. Uh, but of course, it's not going to be 100% precise because um, if you place another order and um, I don't know. Uh, Want to refill your stock and and get a better price from your supplier, or um, you know need to pay more shipping costs because you need to to, to ship it uh, by express or something like this. Then um, changing this price will will also change your profits in the past, and that's normally not what you want to do. So it's a quick way to start, and I would recommend to to, to use this constant uh, cost type for the beginning. But then uh, you can change this type to uh, the one called by period or batch. So uh, what does this do? Basically, this allows us to enter cost of goods by period, as it says, or even by batch. So batch is basically an order which was shipped from your supplier to your prep center or to, um, to Amazon FBA. So let me show you how this looks like. So um, in this pop-up, um, it's possible to add uh, new periods and in, in this case we already have um, two periods uh, so one is going from minus infinity to uh, what is this um, it's the 30th of April uh, 2018 and um, in this case you do not specify your uh, product cost or cost of goods as one number but uh, you can break it down by components so for example manufacturing uh, costed us um, 65 uh, cents Per, per one unit and shipping costed us 35 cent per one unit. And we can just as well say we paid like 350, let's say $350 for shipping, um, but not for one unit, but for 100 units. So, um, the, or, or let's say 1000 units rather. Yeah, exactly. So um, you, you can enter the amount of units here near every uh, cost position. And like PayPal, for example, if we paid like $10 PayPal fee, but for the whole, shipment here then um, you just say it was for 1000 units right so it was like roughly one um, cent per per unit right and this way you can enter all kinds of, of fees that were associated with this uh, with this order like clearance or maybe quality inspection and please be sure to consider them all to to get your lending costs right in um, in the US and then uh, finally we end up with it with a total price which is here on one euro, one cent per unit. So now suppose um, on a certain day, like let's say here May 1st, a new batch arrives, right? So we placed an order, we paid it. Uh, finally, it arrives in the US, um, either at your prep center or in the Amazon FBA warehouse. 
um, it should be the day when you consider this product as uh, available for sale, right? So it can just as well be in your prep center because you know you want to send it to your FBA warehouse later. But um, the starting date for a new period should be really the day when you consider the product is available for sale, right? So um, what you do is you click add new period here and then you get another box like this. And um, here you can enter your new costs again. So let's say manufacturing this time is 60 cents. So we got a little bit of better price from our supplier, but uh, we paid, looks like we needed to pay more for shipping and, um, and so on. We can enter any individual component here. And, um, and then we come up with the total price of 135. So this would mean if I press save now that a seller board will take this price for any order as, as your cost of goods, for, for the profit calculation for any order which came in before um, April, the end of April basically. And starting from beginning of May, it will take this price, which is good. And this way you can be much more precise, uh, but um, it gets even better than that. So there's a check mark here called account for remainder of stock from previous batch. So imagine the following situation. You're, you're placed in order, let's say you bought like 1000 items and um, and then they were shipped, you, you sold, sold them off mostly. And then um, like when you had, let's say 100 items left, a new batch arrived, um, another 1000 items. Uh, and you might have paid a different price uh, for, for this um, order or maybe a different shipping cost, just like in this case. So what you end up with is you've got 1000 products from the new batch and 100 products left from the old batch. And the prices are, of course, different. So now the question is, what's the exactly right price uh, for um, accounting purposes starting the day when the new batch arrives? And um, seller board can help you calculate the exactly right price because we can um, basically enter costs by batch here. So you do it this way. You create a new period, just like, like we did here, starting from the date when the new batch is available for sale, whatever this means to you. And then you click uh, this check mark, account for remainder uh, of stock. So basically what it will do is, it will show you two fields here, old batch and new batch. And here you can type in how many items you have from the old batch. So basically from, from this one, from the previous one, where the total price was uh, one euro, one cent. And how many products we've got in the new batch, let's say it's 1000 here or other 2000s here. Uh, 2,000 products. And um, and basically what seller board, board will do is it will calculate your new total price, which is a weighted average from these two batches. Uh, and they're weighted by, by the amount of products in the old and in the new batch. So basically we have now 100 products left on stock, which we bought for one euro, one cent. And we have 2,000 products where we paid like this amount of money that we just typed in here. And our new um, average total price is uh, 133. So let me show you how this works again. If I remove this check mark, uh, then um, our total price starting from uh, 1st of May is 135 uh, because that's what we just entered here, right? So we entered uh, basically the amount of money we paid for manufacturing, shipping, and so on, and the units, and um, the server board calculated the, um, basically the price per unit, which is 135. If we activate this check mark though, um, account for remainder from previous batch, and we enter the amount that we have still left in our stock from the old batch, then you can see that the uh, total price becomes a little bit less, and it's because we have 100 units where we paid less, um, less than, um, than in this new order. And um, the total average price becomes a little bit less. So if you save now, then what effectively will happen is for all transactions or for all orders, um, products sold before end of April, seller board will use this cost of goods. And starting on uh, May 1st, it will use this cost of goods. And this is basically 100% uh, accurate. So if you type in your cost accurately here, um, then um, this will be a 100% accurate management accounting because, uh, because this price takes into account the remainder from the previous batch and the current batch and all the components of, of those prices. So 
seller board will show you profits which are 100% accurate. Thanks for watching guys. Let us know if you have any questions, you can just um, email us or post in the chat box on uh, sellerboard.com and um, I'll see you soon.